This lesson was made by Yan Wee Fang and Mariah Thrush as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science classroom. Let's correct this title first. A bug is actually a specific group of insects, not a general term for the six-legged organisms you think of. Today, we'll be talking about aquatic insects and other aquatic invertebrates. Let's start with what you might know. Pause the video and discuss these questions with your classmates. It's okay if you didn't know the answers to some or any of these questions. They'll all be answered in this video. Let's start off with a quick introductory video. Follow the link or search for Stream Macroinvertebrates, a love story, on YouTube. Let's break down the word macroinvertebrate. First, macro means it can be seen with the naked eye. An invert means it does not have a backbone. So together, a macroinvertebrate is an organism that can be seen with the naked eye and does not have a backbone. There are a wide variety of macroinvertebrates, including bivalves, insect nymphs and larvae, aquatic beetles, and aquatic worms. Biomonitoring is the shortened term for biological monitoring. Biomonitoring is defined as the use of organisms to assess changes in and the health of the environment. But how do researchers assess these changes? The key to biomonitoring is the concept that organisms living in the stream experience all conditions, both good and bad, in the stream, and the health of organisms reflect the health of the condition of the stream. This picture shows a healthy stream supports a healthy and diverse community. The unhealthy stream can prevent organisms from moving into the habitat, and organisms already in the unhealthy stream could die from the conditions. For streams, researchers can study fish, algae, and the biofilm on rocks or the stream bottom and macroinvertebrates. Today, we'll be focusing on macroinvertebrates. Macroinvertebrates are an excellent indicator of stream health. They are common, abundant, and diverse in streams, so researchers can easily find them. Macroinvertebrates are easy to catch and collect and identify, and the species have different tolerances to pollution. While some species can tolerate pollution more than others, all species show cumulative impacts of pollution, meaning that pollution effects build over time. Macroinvertebrates don't travel very far, usually only a few meters, so their health reflects the health of their habitat. A bioindicator is another mashup word like biomonitoring. Bioindicator can be broken into biological indicator. Macroinvertebrates are ideal bioindicators because they can give researchers an idea about the health of an ecosystem. So researchers can observe the macroinvertebrates in the stream to understand how healthy or unhealthy a stream site is. These pictures show the general processes researchers complete, collecting macroinvertebrates from both nets and underneath rocks, then take them back to the lab to sort and identify. As I mentioned before, macroinverted species can tolerate pollution better than others. Pollution-sensitive species like the mayflies, water pennies, and gilled snails can tolerate very little pollution and will leave or die if pollution enters the habitat. Moderately pollution-sensitive species like crayfish, dragonflies, and clams will tolerate some pollution. Pollution-tolerant species like leeches, ramshorn snails, and black fly larvae will tolerate large amounts of pollution. It's important to realize that these tolerances are the upper limits for macroinvertebrates. In other words, pollution tolerant species could be in healthy streams with pollution sensitive species. There are these species pollution tolerance groups, but we can also categorize the macroinvertebrates in a different way as functional feeding groups. Scrapers, like the water penny, pouch snail, and flathead mayfly, scrape and feed on algae and microbes on rocks from the stream bottom. Shredders, like the giant stonefly, cranefly, and the northern casemaker caddisfly, shred and eat leaves and other organic matter in the water. Collector gatherers, like the riffle beetle, crayfish, and the prong-gilled mayfly collect fine or really small pieces of organic matter, like leaves from the stream bottom. Collector filters, like the blackfly larva, the mussel, and the net spitter caddisfly, filter even smaller pieces of organic matter carried in the water. The last functional feeding group is the predator, like the golden stonefly or dragonflies. 
Predators eat organ other organisms in the stream. This dragonfly will eat any organism it can fit into its mouth. The jaws and dragonflies can extend out to catch prey. Search for dragonfly hunting mosquito larvae and fishes number 221 on YouTube to see the video. Today, you will use identification guides to sort the macroinvertebrates and score the samples to figure out the health of the stream. Pause the video and complete the exploration activity. Researchers collect macroinvertebrates throughout their life cycle, so let's talk about the general life cycle of macroinvertebrates. We'll be using a caddisfly for our example. First, eggs that were laid on a rock at the water's edge hatch in early October. By the third week, the hatched eggs have become larvae, like you see in the top picture. The larvae eat dead leaves and build a shelter, called a case, for protection. Around this time, researchers collect macroinvertebrates for biomonitoring. This means that researchers will be collecting insects in the larval stage or the nymph stage in case of other insects like dragonflies and mayflies. This caddisfly is growing every week and it eventually outgrows its case and its exoskeleton. The caddisfly molts the exoskeleton and builds a new case. The seasons pass and the caddisfly continues to grow, molting and building a new case as needed. In September, the caddisfly forms a pupa and attaches to a rock. It will stay in its pupa for two weeks, changing from larva to adult. The caddisfly emerges from its pupa and climbs out of the water and onto a plant to molt one last time into its adult form. In the next few weeks, the adult will find a mate, lay more eggs, then die. Some artists take advantage of the building abilities of the caddisfly. They place caseless caddisflies in a tank with chips of precious metal and jewels. When the caddisfly outgrow their case and make another, they harvest the bejeweled cases and make them into jewelry. Biomonitoring helps keep our macroinvertebrates healthy, which will keep our streams healthy too. If you want to help with biomonitoring efforts in your area, contact your local watershed group or the nearest Environmental Protection Agency office to see how you can volunteer.